Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining my video today. I wanted to do something that I've been wanting to do for a minute, and that is talk about dating as an ex Jehovah Witness. Uh, I wanted to do this for a while, and there's just been a lot of things that have been going on. However, first, before I get into my topic for today, I just want to say thank you to all of the people that wrote me on my, my previous video, the well-wishers, just wonderful, wonderful people that, you know, gave me a lot of compassion and just wonderful, wonderful vibes. And I just want to say thank you. One of the reasons that I do videos is it's not for any of that, but it does, it helps when you know that there's people out there that that care and are listening and, and they can empathize with what you've gone through. And for me, I literally do my videos because I want to, to really help people to just understand that you're not alone and to know that you're not alone. And I want to talk about some of the things that have happened to me in my life because I'm now on the other side. I, I've let, I left the Jehovah Witness organization when I was 17 years old. It's been almost 30 years now. And... I didn't have a lot of resources. I didn't have a lot of people that I could talk to that understood what it was like to be born in, to have parents that were born in, to have grandparents that converted when they were very early and to literally have, you know, on both sides of your family, just everybody was Jehovah Witnesses and your whole entire support group and friends and all of that was Jehovah Witnesses. Like, for me to actually decide at 17 to walk away and know that I was changing my life dramatically, I didn't know what I was going to be in for. And I always say that life is kind of one of those things where sometimes you don't know what you don't know until you know. <laughs> and now that I'm sort of on the other side of that, and and life is not perfect for me. I mean, some there's some things that I'm very gratified about. I'm gratified that I was able to, you know, graduate from college a few times. Um, I was able to get, you know, multiple degrees and multiple, you know, certifications and to be uh, educated professional and to be able to, you know, travel the world and, and just do amazing things professionally. But I never want to give the... I never wanted to seem that my life was perfect because it's not. And I don't want it to seem like it was this perfect journey for me. Um, there were a lot of stops and starts in my life, including college. And I made a lot of bad decisions. And, and as I said before, I don't look at my life as like having regrets. These are huge lessons for me. Things that I didn't know that I didn't know. Things that I didn't know that I needed to address and myself. Um, deficiencies that my family didn't know because we were in this cult and that was very controlling and very dogmatic. And so when I broke free of that, I, you know, I was sort of out there trying to create my own path. And there were a lot of things that I learned along the way. And if I can share any of those lessons with anyone out you know, out in the world that's maybe going through something similar, then that's literally the reason why I do my videos. And so I was a 17-year-old young woman, um, and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I wanted to date, and I wanted to eventually get married. I think I've shared that I used to see myself as a Claire Huxtable. I love the Cosby show and I kind of saw myself as like a Claire Huxtable with a dash of Barbra Streisand. <laughs> That's not, I'm not Jewish or anything. But I, I wanted to be this professional woman and I wanted to be a, uh, someone who had my own identity outside of being a, a wife and a mother. And I wanted to have my own profession. And I've always wanted that in my life. Uh, when I was a Jehovah Witness, I thought I would be a missionary, be an elder's wife, because it's really not a lot of things you can do in the Jehovah Witness organization as a woman. You're sort of a helper to your man who can rise the ranks. But um, so that's a whole nother topic that I've kind of gotten into in another video on why the view of women never 
set right for me because if you're a high performing woman and you're someone who feels like you can go out there and kind of create your own path, it's a little difficult when you're in the the sort of the the Jehovah Witness ideology of you know the role of the woman. So when I left at 17, I made a lot of mistakes dating because I, I knew that I wanted to get married. I knew that I wanted to have children. And, but again, I also wanted a profession. So I certainly focused a lot of my attention on my education, but I also dated a lot. More than I ever wanted to, to be perfectly honest. I, I think I was under this illusion that my life would be like my parents. So a little background on that is, and I'm just going to go back two generations. My maternal and paternal grandmothers were married by the time they were 17 years old. And my mother was married when she was 18 years old. So the only, t the only women that I were, that I was around were women who had literally been married since they were very young. So the, the way that I was raised as a, as a young woman, and I'm the only girl, I have a lot of brothers, but I was only female in my family, uh, in my immediate family, was to kind of the expectation, just like my mother was raised, is that I would, you know, go to the Kingdom Hall, visit different Kingdom Halls, go to the convention. And I was certainly one who, you know, went to, and I know things have changed so much, but when I was growing up, we had our regular meetings, and then we had a circuit assembly and we had a district assembly. So when you got a little bit older, <clears throat> I would say 14, 15, it wasn't uncommon to visit other kingdom halls. Um, certainly the circuit and district conventions and me, I've been going to them my entire life. That's kind of where you met people in your age group and started making connections, especially at lunch. Like literally that's all you did was walk around and scope guys. That that was me as, as a young female, <laughs> that's all I did. So you kind of had an idea about where your interests were. So, and I had a lot of family friends. One of the good parts of having all brothers is that there was always boys around when I was growing up, uh, my brothers all had a lot of male friends. They were always coming over. So of course I had crushes on a lot of my brother's friends. And I already had, you know, and, and as I mentioned in one of my other videos, because I had all of my family on both sides and, and they were all Jehovah Witnesses, I always went to the king, different kingdom halls. I've, I've literally been affiliated with about six kingdom halls that I went to for years. And it was literally because my parents were divorced. My father had been disfellowship and reinstated. He moved, um, you know, from one place to another. My mother and stepfather also moved and went to a different kingdom hall. So, and then my grandparents, my aunts and uncles all went to different kingdom halls. Uh, some of them went to the same, but most of the time I was always going to different kingdom halls, depending on what I was doing on a weekend or if they had a special talk or, you know, I had, a, uh, you know, one of my uncles was a, a presiding overseer. My grandfather was a presiding overseer. So it wasn't uncommon for me to go to different, you know, different kingdom halls. And of course, there were always, you know, young men there that were around my age, so I had already sort of, you know, had people that were interested in me, um, had guys that, you know, I was kind of like, maybe this could go a certain way. But when I left at 17, that all went, you know, out the door. And I was left with the ideas that I had been raised with and didn't realize I had been raised with. And then I'm out in what I call the quote unquote real world. So that's kind of, well, there's always a matrix theme in the background of my sort of videos. So what what is the difference between the real world and the Jehovah Witness world? So especially when it comes to dating, 
And that was one of the things that I, you know, really realized because I was working at Sears and Roebuck when I was 16, 17, and a little bit when I was 18 years old. And I didn't realize how many things I took for granted when I started being around people that were not Jehovah Witnesses and guys that were interested in me that were not Jehovah Witnesses and dating them. So there's sort of a subtext when you're in the Jehovah Witness religion, and it's not a true subtext, but it's a subtext that if you're in this religion, there's a certain manner that these young men are being raised in. There's a certain certain way that they live their life, a certain way that they view women, a certain way that they view marriage. And in the Jehovah Witness religion, you're really not supposed to have sex before marriage. You're only supposed to date for marriage. <clears throat> so you don't turn off a switch <laughs> when you have been, you know, sort of conditioned this certain way your whole life when you're outside of um, you know, the Jehovah Witness structure. And I I didn't realize those things. I didn't, I took that kind of for granted um, in that I sort of thought the best of people or kind of believed, you know, that, you know, someone that was well-spoken and well-read and well-bred from what I saw was pretty much on the same level as the the people in the Kingdom Hall. And, and we know that even what, we saw in the Kingdom Hall was not accurate. But, you know, there's a certain thing that you're conditioned to believe that people are different and the Jehovah Witness organization. And so when I was dating, I, and this is also kind of with friends too, is that I thought people were friendly, that they were good, that they were genuine. Um, so I dated and my first, and I dated a few guys that didn't really last too long. But my first long-term relationship, excuse me, I dated him for almost two years. And we actually lived together. And I definitely, I thought, because <laughs> I was 18, that we were going to end up together. And we were going to eventually get married. And I just, you know, because I wasn't, I wasn't prepared to date a lot and I didn't realize that. So when the relationship ended, when I broke up with him, because I realized he wasn't a good person, I was totally not ready for it. <laughs> you know, like I, in my mind, and I was just like, why is this hard, so hard for me to get over? And I think because I had literally put all of my thinking and to let me give everything to this person because we're going to eventually end up together. And it didn't happen. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm a hundred percent so glad that it didn't because first of all, I didn't know myself. Secondly, and more importantly, is that he was not a good man for me. And so I needed to do some things in myself before I even ever considered getting into a serious relationship and getting married. And I think that one of the things, and so I have a daughter that's in that sort of age group now, and she and I have long talks about dating and relationships. And, you know, me being happily married and, you know, married to, you know, the love of my life, my soulmate, but, you know, there's so many things I wish I knew back then you know, um, another thing, and this is again, something I tell my daughter, um, I felt like I had to date, <laughs> you know, like I really was like, you know, and there's a lot of pressure with females, um, you know, like you feel like, you know, your friends are getting married or you see them in serious relationships. So I felt that I needed to be in a relationship and that was a mistake because, you don't have to be in a, you're, you're a valid woman, whether you're in a relationship or not. And I needed to learn to love myself first. And I needed to learn how to figure out what type of woman I was going to be before I could ever be in a relationship with anyone. And, <clears throat> you know, I had to sort of unlearn the Jehovah Witness ideology and I had to 
figure out what type of person I was going to be. And that's important. So, you know, sometimes I feel like I've met a lot of ex Jehovah Witnesses that go from one extreme to the other. You go from being in a very conservative situation to going and being completely, you know, just going out there and just dating any and everyone and being, um, being very promiscuous and, and just doing any and everything. And I don't think that's the answer either. I think that you need to figure out what type of, of relationship and, and marriage, if that's what you want. But you have to do so with a good idea of what you're looking for and then give yourself time to find it. And that's the other part. I wasn't really, I really wasn't that interested in dating a lot. <clears throat> but I realized that if I wanted to find the right person for me, that I literally had to take some time and do that. And I think that that was when I actually got in my head and I was like, you know, don't put your heart and soul into something until you know that that is what you want. And, and that is another thing that really changed me. Um, and when I learned to love myself, like totally love myself and feel good about who I was and date, not in fear, like, you know, and I, you know, this is not Jehovah Witness, meaning you never were Jehovah Witness and ex Jehovah Witnesses, um, that are females where I feel like sometimes you, you know, we as women jump into relationships because we feel like, first of all, it's a, it's a box I need to check. And I think that's a mistake. Or the other one is, um, you know, my clock is ticking, my biological clock is ticking, and I want to have children. So you rush into get with someone who kind of is what you're looking for, but not quite, just so that you can say you were married and have children. And I just, again, I'm on the other side of that. <laughs> so I have a lot of, I have a lot of friends that I've known over the years that got married because they thought it was what they should be doing. And it, and they knew there were things that were not right, but they wanted to have children. They wanted to get married. And, and every single one of those situations is they're divorced. Now, the people that I know, because these are the people that I really look to um, that have long term relationships that are successful, are people that actually didn't just rush in to getting into a relationship, that didn't feel any fear because, oh my goodness, you know, so what? I'm 30 years old and I don't have a serious relationship. You know, I've met, I met a woman when I'm um, at one of my jobs. Uh, she was, um, I don't want to say too much, but she was a, I'll just say one thing. She was a pilot. <laughs> and that was one of the many things that she did. And she had gotten married when she was about 24. And her husband was killed literally the day after her wedding. So she never had a chance to, to you know, to have a, a married life. And she was, of course, devastated. And she was so devastated that she really pushed herself into her career and was able to, you know, she started really, you know, going out with friends, traveling the world, moving up the ranks in her career. And, you know, and she got over, you know, it's my clock ticking because, you know, again, she was like, I, I wanted to have children, but I was like, I don't want to be a single mother. Um, you know, I'm not really sure if this is for me, if I don't find the right person. So she decided to join a running club of all things. And she was about her late 50s. So like, like say 50, 57, 58. She didn't look her age at all, but she decided to join a running club and she met someone <clears throat> and he was divorced. He had three children and he was at the top of his career. Again, I don't want to give anything away, but he was at the top of his career um, and had just former military um, and had uh, decided to get into running because his children got a little bit older 
and he wanted to get into something. He, he ran, but he wanted to kind of learn how to run the right way. So they met and within the six months had fallen hopelessly in love. Within a year and a half had gotten married and she looked at me and she said, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. And, you know, I have children, you know, like these are my children. And I, you know, I, I gave up on, you know, all these things because I thought life, what this wasn't in the cards for me. And I, she's like, I was good with that. You know, I was close with my sister, I was close with, you know, some friends, lifelong friends. We had traveled the world. We had done so many great things. So I really just was like, okay, well, if this is my life. This is my life. And then this happened. And I think that listening to her and seeing how happy and how confluent she was with her husband, it really said a lot to me. And, you know, I do mentor young women all the time. And I use her and the quite a few other women um, that are married and have been married for years and are very happy, but they didn't follow this. I need to get married at a certain time. I need to have kids at a certain time. If I don't, I'm not, I need to be dating. No, if you don't, if don't date just to date, um, don't date the wrong person because you're waiting for the right one. Um, there's nothing wrong with having friends and going out, but you know, <clears throat> these are things that when I was younger, because I think it's kind of peer pressure that you know I put on myself, and it was my own. You know, nobody was saying it to me. It was sort of one of those things where I felt like I needed to do it, and when I stopped all of that. You know, when I started to journey and again, there were some great women that mentored me and helped me. And I started talking, you know, to, you know, long term married people and I and successful long term married people. Let me get that straight. I learned some things about myself and I learned some things about what I needed to do in myself. And when I did that, you know, I was able to find someone who was exactly what I was looking for. And I actually, you know, I did a little thing and I'm not saying you need to do this, but I kind of wrote down some things that I, I wanted in a man. And I never had thought about doing that before. Um, but it's actually really good advice because when I was younger, and I say this now sort of laughingly, you know, the only thing that really mattered was he was cute and he liked me too. And he, you know, dressed you know, sort of nice. But my grandmother used to say, everything that glitters is not gold. <laughs> and as I've gotten older, just because someone carries themselves nice and speaks well does not mean that they're a good person. There's a lot of people that are what I call Decepticons <laughs> and they carry themselves well, they talk well. And then when you get to know them, they're nothing like what they appear to be. And when you're dating especially in this, what I call the real world, it's going to be hard to find good, decent people. And you're going to have to do the work. And, you know, something that I told my daughter um, is like, you know, when you're out there, you, you see a whole bunch of rocks. There's nothing, one, you know, it's not a big deal to find a rock, but, but a, you know, a precious gem. And that's what you that's what you're looking for. So you you you're going to expect that that's going to actually take some digging and it's going to actually take some work. So, you know, put in the work, but enjoy yourself while you're doing it. And, you know, and when I, you know, stopped worrying about this that and other thing and, you know, stopped stressing, I was actually able to and and kind of got to know myself and didn't have fear controlling me. And I just went out and had fun and I relaxed. And I, when I knew what I wanted, I didn't feel the need to date someone that wasn't what I was looking for. And I had a much better time and a much better, a much better experience. Um, another thing I want to mention is, you know, I said about one extreme to the other. I'm not here to talk about sex before marriage, but I do want to say that I think it's important to have standards 
And, you know, I have some of my closest friends that, you know, they waited until they got married. And I think that's wonderful. I think you should wait until you're in a serious relationship with a commitment. And I think that's just, this is my personal experience. But again, sometimes when you go from one conservative extreme and then you come out of it and you're trying to figure out what you think, you know, there's a whole lot of, you know, there's a whole lot of bad advice for broken, from broken people. And they really, really attach themselves to vulnerable people. And a lot of times when you're leaving the ex-Jehovah Witness, when you're leaving the Jehovah Witness environment, you become an ex-Jehovah Witness, you're vulnerable because you're, you're hurting and you're dealing with a lot of of grief. You're going through the grieving process. So when it comes to relationships, sometimes you're in a vulnerable place and you're trying to, you know, swing that pendulum. And I would say, try and find a nice balance in all things, but always love yourself first, value yourself first. Don't feel the need to date just to date. And, and you know, be honest if that's right for you. I, I have friends that never wanted to get married and still are not married and that's fine, you know, but if you're going to do it, you know, do it with a good frame of mind. I promise, <laughs> I promise that you will have a good experience when you love yourself first. And so this is just, you know, a little conversation with the Oracle. I wanted to kind of share my journey a little bit and just give some friendly advice. Um, I may do, um, you know, another video or two about, you know, life lessons, but I certainly wanted to share this. I hope you're having a blessed day and I look forward to talking with you soon.